today's session is on meeting minutes. I'm going to log into our training environment as a PM. And then for those of you that are new to gate three, this is our home screen. And to access the meeting minutes module from the screen, you're going to come over on the left hand side, you're going to click communications and click meeting. For those of you that are new to gate three, we do have a lot of sessions. We pretty much cover every module in gate three. We also have an introduction session. You want to register for that. I'm going to go into our meeting. When you uh, access the meeting minutes module in gate three, this is your default view. I'm just going to access my project here. For those of you, again, that are new to gate three, I just want to point out that this home screen that we were in, this is the new gate three user interface. However, a lot of our modules still reside in the old gate three user interface and meetings is one of those. That's why the look and feel is a little different. But because I accessed my project from the old gate three user interface, I have to again, access the meetings module from this interface. So to do that from here, you're going to click start project management and meetings. So this will be your default view when you log into the module. You'll see here you have your document type, your meeting number, the meeting type, the status of that document. This is a gate three generated reference number, the meeting title, the meeting date, and the location where the meeting was held. So you can either anything highlighted in a blue is a hyperlink. You can click on open under the actions column or on the meeting number to open up that meeting. Before we continue, I just want to show you another view. So to, to access different views, just come up here and click view. So right now we're in the all meetings view. We do have issued meetings. So I just want to explain the difference here. So right now in this view, these are all the actual documents and then all the meeting items for that specific meeting is in the document. Issued meetings is every single meeting item for every single meeting in every document. So for example, there could be five meeting items in one meeting document. They will be all broken up separately in here. So these are all the items. If they have this view as well, any closed meeting items, you have that view as well. So anything that's been closed out in that meeting document will reside here. If you want to do a quick view. I'll just go back to the main meeting view. And then you also here, instead of having to come up to the view menu to view issued meetings, you can just check this box and it will display just issued meetings. Also, you can use these filter text boxes to search for a specific meeting as well. And then there's a refresh. If you need to refresh, it is here as well. So right now I'm going to go to the new menu. And I'm going to click new meeting. So document type. So today we're going to select a meeting. You could do an agenda. You can create an agenda from a meeting as well. For right now, we're going to create a meeting. And this is what I want to bring to your attention is here. As you can see, it is mandatory to add a meeting type. There will be a drop down if there have been meeting types already created. So you can see here, there's a bunch of different meeting types. So for example, if I were to select one from this dropdown, um, let's just do close out. You'll get a pop-up. To use this meeting type, you must be in the most recent meeting. Select OK to open the most recent meeting. So what this means is a meeting type was already created with this meeting type title or name, close out. So I'd have to go back into that meeting document, the most recent one, and create a next meeting with that same meeting type. I can't just select it when I'm creating a new meeting type. So in this case, if it's a brand new meeting, you have to click add type for a new meeting. Here, I'll just put, just as an example, uh, because I have, I'll put to date date. So I know which one you're looking for. And then you would click apply. So once I save that, submit this, once we're done with this document, I can no longer change this meeting type. So we'll continue and then we'll go on and I'll show you what you can do, create a next meeting or a new version. 
All right, so meeting date, we'll leave that today's date, meeting start time. Uh, you can come in here and click in between the A and the M, use the up and down arrows. You can change it from AM to PM, but you can manually just type in the correct meeting start time and same for end time as well. And meeting title, I'll just put as an example, and then meeting location, I'll just put site trailer. And then there you have chairperson. This, I'm going to put myself as a chairperson. So you're going to select a project contact and only one project contact can be selected as a chairperson. And the role of the chairperson is really the one that sets the agenda or leads to the meeting, maintains order at the meeting or taking notes. So I'll just put myself here. And then you'll notice here you have next meeting date, next meeting start time and next meeting location. So if we're going to have a follow-up meeting, I would add next meeting date. So I'll just put for next week. That's fine. And then same location. Because what will happen is when we create a next meeting, this next meeting date, start time, and next meeting location will automatically be pulled into that next meeting. So here you have attendees and distribution list. And you can see here that automatically the chairperson was pulled in under att attendees and distribution list. Now here you're going to start populating the people or the attendees. So I'll just put a couple extra names here. You would add all your attendees. Now anyone that is entered under the attendee section will also be populated in the distribution list. So anyone under the distribution list will automatically receive an email of this document, this meeting minute. Uh, if you need to remove someone, you can definitely do that. You can do that here as well. So we just entered meeting details. Before I continue to the meeting items, I just want to show you that if you go and save as draft, you're going to notice a button appear here after you save this draft, which is the attendees list. So let me go ahead and do that. And now you have this attendance sheet. So you could actually click on this. It's going to download a PDF. Everyone that you added in that attendance list will be noted here. And you can print this prior to the meeting, hand it out at the meeting if you want to get the attendee signatures. Okay, and then you can upload that into your meeting document. So to continue, if you haven't saved this draft, you're just going to come back in here and click edit. So the next section is the meeting items. What you want to do is you want to add a topic. I'll put here project schedule, just as an example, title, uh, and now here you see assigned to. You can add any project contact you want to assign the meeting item to. So maybe this is an action item. I can assign it to someone. I'll just put myself here. So I'm going to assign this to me. Um, and then the different statuses. So if you click here, you'll have three options, three different statuses. So the default is open. Only open items can be assigned to a contact. So if I were to select informational, it would remove the assigned to. We're going to leave this as open. Let's add my name back. And then right here, you can color code the priority. So if I select high, it'll be color coded. In the PDF, if you print out the PDF of this meeting document, it will not be color coded. It will just tell you the priority of whether it's critical, high, medium, low. And then we have tags here. This is optional. This is used to categorize meeting items. You know, if I wanted to, this is completely optional. Okay. Now, because I've assigned this meeting item to myself, maybe this, you know, there's a date required. So maybe I need to respond by Thursday, let's say. Here, you can associate any attachments to the item. This attachment will also be sent to everyone on the distribution list. So if I were to come and click on it, you know, I can add more information here, attach a file, I'll just select something here, apply. So you'll see there is one attachment. Then you'll see this comment icon. 
So you can add a comment relating to the meeting item. These comments will be logged as meeting notes. Okay, optional. Again, this is optional. And if maybe you want to remove this altogether, you can just click on the trash bin icon and remove it. To add another line, click add item within the selected topic. So you just click add item and you'll notice that now it went from 1.1 to 1.1.1. The other option you have, if you wanted to add maybe another topic, instead of clicking add item from this item, you would click it from the topic. You'll notice it will go from one to 1.2. And then I could add another item, another topic that what is going to be discussed. If I wanted to do that, so maybe this one will be claims, and I will put, um... now I know that you're just seeing one line here and you're thinking, but I only have this much space to enter information. No, it will open up. The more you type, the space will get bigger. There's a lot of space there for you to type the information. And again, if I needed to assign this to someone, I can do that. Actually, let me add something in here as well. I just put pine sack for this one. And then I'm going to put open for this one as well. And I'll just put low. This time I won't assign it to anyone for this one here. And again, if I wanted to add another item under this topic, I would just click add item from the previous item. Or if we've moved on to the next topic, I'll just click add another item for this one. If I'm going to do another topic uh, related to all of this, then I would just come up to the first topic and click add item and you'll see the 1.3. Now, if I were to come up here and click add topic, so here before we did the one, 1.1, 1 1.1, 1 1 1 1.1, so on and so forth, and then because I added another item from this topic, it went to 1.2. But if you add a completely new topic, it will change to 2, 2.1, etc. One thing I want you guys to keep in mind is that think about how you want to lay out your meeting minutes because unfortunately you cannot drag and drop any of these meeting items. So just think about how you want to lay it out before you actually start. Uh, down here, this is just a disclaimer. This is pulled in for, from your project settings. So just to point out here, these corrections, if there's any corrections to be made, these corrections should be noted to the recorder within seven days of the issuance of these minutes. If within seven days, a change is needed regarding this meeting minutes document, the only way to make a revision is to supersede this active document. So you would have to create a new version. So I'll show you that. And then here you can add additional comments and you can also attach a file here as well. Uh, just remember if you're going to attach a file here or any comments, please make sure you come over to the right hand side and click apply. And then you'll notice that my comments is here now. If you just wanted to, because you haven't submitted this, and you just wanted to delete this entire thing altogether, you could click delete. You could even click cancel. If you're not done, just save it as draft. Because once you're submit, you can't come in here and do any edit. You'll have to either create a new version or a next meeting for that follow-up meeting. So I'm going to go ahead and click submit. So here is the meeting. So this is the meeting number 349-1. This is my our first meeting number for this meeting type. And here's all my items. You can create an agenda from a meeting minute. You could do that if you wanted to. Agendas are typically handed out prior to the meeting. It's, it's a list of the meeting items in the order they are discussed. I don't know many people that actually use this, but you can do that. So let's say that you need to make a change to this meeting document. What you're going to do is you're going to come into this meeting document. So I'm just going to back out for a second. And I'm going to search for it here. So I'm going to use that reference number. 
Now, if you had the uh, meeting title or the meeting type, you could use that as well. I don't recommend the meeting number, the one, two, three, because you're going to get a lot of new meetings with meeting number one. So this is just meeting number one for this meeting type. Okay, and you can see this is meeting number one for this meeting type. Okay, so I would recommend meeting type, meeting title, reference number. So you would search for it. There it is. So I can either click on the meeting number or on the open action. And then I would click new version. So I'm in here. So now uh, it's a new meeting, but the new, new version. And you can tell it's a new version because the previous one was 349-1. This one is now 349-2. So you can add additional attendees, distribution, you know, you can add an extra item if you had to, and then submit it again. Let's just go, I'm going to toggle back to the original one. I have it open. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a next meeting. So this is going to be the follow-up meeting or this original meeting. So you're going to click next meeting. And what you're going to do here, if you notice, in the original, let me go back to the original, I had next meeting date, next meeting start time, and next meeting location. It, you will see that it was automatically pulled into this next meeting. Okay, meeting date, start time, and time meeting location. Living type, so remember you can't change that. And as I was saying, you'd have to create this meeting type from the most recent meeting, which is what we're doing right now. Meeting title, you could change this or second meeting, whatever it is. Here, please don't put myself again. Uh, next meeting date, if you know, maybe this is a weekly meeting, monthly meeting. And then here, if you have new attendees, you can add them, change it. So we can add more topics, we can add more items, but as you can see, you cannot delete them. What you can do is you notice in the original meeting, I had put a status of open for both of these. You can close these, but in order to, to close the main meeting item, so this here is the first meeting item for this topic, 1.1. This is considered your parent meeting item or, or your main meeting item, and th these would be your sub or child meeting item. In order for me to close this main item first, I must close the sub items first before I close the, the parent, the main meeting item, because I don't. So let me just show you. So if I try to close that main meeting item first, I'm going to get this pop up and it says all children must be closed before closing a parent item. So won't, the system won't allow you. So you have to close the sub item first. And that's why I say it's very important to make sure that you have an idea of how you want to lay out your meeting item. Mm -hmm. Both these items had to be closed because these are sub items in order to close the parent. And if you wanted to continue, you could add a new topic or if you want to continue where you left off. So maybe in here, let's do this one here, 1.2.1, 1. add an item. You can do that, okay? Or you can add a new topic or a completely new topic. This one here, let's put, um, okay, and then I can put here informational and then I'll just add one more and you can continue the up to another date. And you notice you'll see the garbage uh, bin icons here. These are for the ones that I just added in this one. That's why you see it, but you won't see it for the previous ones that were added. So I'm going to go ahead and submit this because I um, want to show you something. I'm going to download the PDF of this uh, meeting minutes document. So right here, you can see meeting minutes the project startup um, and then the project number 
and here's all the meeting details that we entered, the attendees, the distribution list, all the meeting items. So this was the second meeting item. So meeting number two, and you can see that we have closed these items. So if I now were to create another next meeting for our next meeting, this would no longer appear because it's been closed in that next meeting. So I'll show you that. Okay. Let me just go back. I also want to point out here, if you notice, you have show history here. So if there was any notes added to any of the meeting items after the first meeting, it will show a history. So let me just click. It opens up a separate PDF. Okay. And you can see my comment that I had added due to follow up on sub list. So that was from the original one. So when there's any comments added, you can see a history of any comments added to that meeting item. It is a separate PDF, but it does give you that option. Um, you will never be able to see the history on any meeting items from a draft meeting document. So this is our second one. And I'm just going to click on next meeting because I want to go back to this um, status because we closed it in the second meeting. And I just want to show you that it will no longer appear in that third meeting. Okay. And you can see it's gone. So let's just go back. So this was between section 11 and 10, 20. Go back to the view. Okay, so there's the two meetings. I didn't close off that third meeting. I just want to show you that those uh, extra items that were closed are no longer no longer appear in that next meeting. So there you'll see meeting number one and meeting number two for this meeting type. Okay, and then here are the gate three reference numbers. So let's go back. Let me go back to this one. Meeting number two. If I were to create a new version, like I showed you earlier, uh, I'm just going to click submit. And I'm going to go back to the name view. And it was false. Okay, so you'll see that it's been superseded because I created a new version. It still keeps it as meeting number two. However, the reference number is a little different. So the very first meeting was 349 1. The second meeting is 350-1, if we created a next meeting after this one, it would be 351-1. However, what we did here is we created a new version. So we superseded this one and it's now 350-2, not 351-1. So that is the new version. Uh, now, next thing I want to show you is um, that issued meeting. And uh, these are all the actual individual meeting items and all the meeting documents with this meeting type. So here's all the item numbers. Anything that's been closed, and uh, we did close those couple of items. Just click in that meeting type. All the items are here. And just back out. Um, next thing I want to show you is the help. So if you're in here and you're creating a meeting minute document um, and you get stuck, or maybe you're not sure if you should create a new version, or or, or maybe you want uh, some additional information how to create a next meeting, just come over to the top right and click on help. Okay, this will take you to our help page. And then here on the left hand side, so you navigate to the module that you want. So in this case, we want meetings down here. I'll just expand the arrow here. And right here, you can, um, how to create a meeting document, how to create an agenda for a meeting document, how to create a new version. So if I click on uh, create a meeting document, this gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to create that document. And we also have created some videos that are about two to five minutes in length. Okay, so if you ever get stuck, just know you can come in here. 